Components are the building blocks of any interactive site. And when you add animation to them, they become so much more than just static little pieces. By combining component variants with interactions, we can create dynamic components that respond to taps, clicks, hover, and more. In this lesson, I'll show you how to wire up interactions inside your components and animate between variants to create polished, reusable elements that feel alive. Before we jump in, let's just take a quick bird's eye look at the anatomy of an animated component interaction. We've got a component variant that we start on. We've got a layer within that that's going to be our trigger layer that we add an interaction to, like an icon that we click, for example, and then another variant that we transition to. Then Framer will automatically animate the differences between the variant that we started on and the variant we transitioned to. And then, of course, we can tweak things like the speed and the easing of the transition itself. And of course, just like the previous tutorial, in order for us to animate variants, the variants have to exist in the first place. And I am assuming you've got some base of knowledge on components and component variants and how all that works. So if you don't, head to Framer Fundamentals and check out the lesson on components. So let's jump into the project file here. I've got a component already created for a little toggle down here. And if I double click on this, we can go in and see that I have not yet created any variants for this. I'll zoom in just a little bit to make this easier to see. Now, what we want here is a variant just like this one, where we've got the icon on the left highlighted with the circle behind it. Then we want another variant where the middle icon is highlighted with the circle behind it. And a third one where the third icon is highlighted with the circle behind it. So let's create those variants. I'm going to set up both of them ahead of time. I'm going to click here to create a new variant, and then I'm going to do it again so that we have all three variants. And I'm going to scoot these a little closer together just so that way I can zoom in and make things a little bit easier to see. So as you know from the intro to components lesson in Framer Fundamentals, every variant of a component shares the same layers. We modify the properties of those layers. We can move them around. We can change their appearance. But it's the same set of layers in each and every variant. So here, what we're going to do is take this existing circle in variant two and move it to the center. And I just want to be absolutely sure it's dead center. So I'm going to hold the Option key on my Mac, Alt key on a PC, and just double check the measurements here. We've got four pixels above, below, and 52 on the side. So that is perfectly centered and aligned. Then I'm going to take this first icon frame and I'm going to reduce the opacity down to 40%. I'm just going to tap the number four on the keyboard to do that really quickly. And then for the middle icon, that's now meant to be the one that's highlighted, I'll press the zero key to bring it up to 100% opacity. And again, you'll notice everything I'm doing here on variant two does not affect variant one, which is the primary variant. But everything I do on the primary variant will affect all the other variants. But we'll get back to that in just a sec. So again, we want to do some overrides here on variant three. We want the circle to be all the way at the end here. And again, I'll hold option on my Mac just to double check those measurements. Everything looks good. So I'll reduce this icon to 40% and I'll bring this one up to 100%. Again, by using the number four to set 40% and the number zero on the keyboard to set 100%. And if you tap zero again, it'll toggle between 100% and 0%. So that's a really handy shortcut. OK, so this is the gist of the setup. These are how I want the three variants to look that I want to animate between with interactions. And before I go any further, I am going to be a good boy and I'm going to name each one of these variants. So I'm going to name the first one item one. I'm going to name the second one item two. And you guessed it. The third one is going to be item three, which will be helpful later. Now we can start linking these variants together with interactions, starting with this second icon, which we want to be able to click on and transition to the second variant that has that icon highlighted. So with this icon selected, you can come up here. There are a couple of ways to do this. You can come up here to the top of the properties panel and click to add an interaction. And the type of interaction we're doing here is called a transition. Events are something else, and we're going to talk about that in an upcoming lesson. But for now, we want to do transitions. But choosing new transition here isn't really the quickest way to do this in the first place. So what I'm going to do is if we look over here on the layer itself, there's a little lightning bolt icon. And you'll see that depending on your zoom level. If you're zoomed too far out, you might not see it. If you're zoomed too far in, you might not see it. So make sure your zoom level is all good. Or if you don't see the icon, but you want to add an interaction, you can just press the letter L, the same shortcut as adding a link to a normal page, 
press the letter L on the keyboard and your cursor turns into a little pick whip, which lets you click to choose which variant you want to transition to. So I'm going to click on item two. Now we get to choose exactly what interaction is going to trigger this transition to occur. There's click, which technically means click down and then release the mouse button. There's click start, which means as soon as the mouse button gets clicked down, the interaction will trigger. There's mouse enter, which means hovering your cursor over the trigger layer. And then there's mouse leave, which means hovering your cursor away from the trigger layer. Then we have a delay, but since we want things to be nice and snappy, I'm going to leave that at zero and click is indeed what we want for this interaction. So there we go. One down. Let's now test it out. And instead of just pressing command P, I'm going to select the variant itself and then click the play button next to the name of it. So that way I know where I'm starting here in the preview window. And here we go. We're starting on variant one. And if I click on this icon, there we go. It triggered on click, transitioned automatically to variant two, and the properties that animated were the position of that circle and the opacity of those icons. But now I've sort of reached a dead end. If I try to click to go back or go anywhere for that matter, we don't have any interactions set up yet except on this middle icon. So let's go and create the rest of those interactions. I'm going to go back to the design canvas here. And now you might be tempted to select the first icon on item two and link that back to the item one variant. And then you might want to go over to the first icon on the item three variant and link that back to the item one variant. But just like layers themselves and other properties, the other variants inherit everything from the primary variant. That is, unless we go and override the properties on those other variants. So if we set up our interactions on the primary variant and the primary variant only, it'll be on every variant. So let's do that. Let's just set it up once and have Framer do the rest of the work for us. So I'm actually going to link this first icon on the primary variant to the primary variant. You'll notice it'll let me do that. It'll let me sort of link to itself. And I do want click, so I'll leave it at that. And then the third one, I'll press L on the keyboard and link that over to item three. And we want that on click, no delay as well. And that's it. I've just set up all of the interactions on all of the variants by setting them up on the primary variant. Pretty nice. So let's preview this again. I'll click on my primary variant, click on the preview button. And then when I click on the second icon, there we go. We transition to the second variant, third icon, third variant, back and forth. I can skip wherever we go. There are no dead ends. Now, if we want to play with the speed or springiness of the animation itself, we can go back and with a variant itself selected, you'll see transition as a property. Now, just like everything else, if we set this on the primary variant, the other variants will inherit it. But let's say you want one of them to go a little quicker than the others. The important thing to know is that when you set the transition, you're setting the transition to the variant that you have selected, not from the variant you have selected. It could go either way. Just know that it's the incoming speed for the variant that you have selected when you're playing with these settings. So with the primary variant selected, I'm going to make an adjustment. I want this to go just a little bit quicker. I'm going to bump this down to, let's say, 0.4 seconds, just so the animation is a little bit more snappy and responsive. And if I preview that, there we go. It's just a little bit faster, a little bit more snappy, and it's going to feel more responsive and performant to the visitor. Now, one more thing I want to point out, if we go back to the design canvas here, is that there's this special type of variant down below that says hover slash pressed. And that allows us to create a hover state or a press state, which is in fact a variant, but the hover interaction or the pressed interaction comes with it automatically. But setting up a hover or press state is going to be just for the variant that it's below. So if I wanted each and every one of these to have a hover state, let's say I wanted the background to get a little bit brighter when hovering over this whole component, I would have to set up a hover state for variant one, another one for variant two, another one for variant three. So I don't necessarily want to do that. But an alternative, which we learned about earlier in the course, is that I can set up a hover effect on the icons themselves. So that way the icons can respond to hover and I won't have to do it on each and every variant because whatever I do here on the primary variant is going to get inherited. So I'm just going to select each one of these three icons. And I'm going to come down here to effects on the properties panel, and I'm going to add a hover effect. And on hover, I think I want the opacity of each of these to go to 80% or 0.8. And I want to leave the scale alone. So I'm going to leave the scale at one instead of 1.1. And now when we go and preview this, we should see 
There we go. Now when we hover on each and every one of these icons, we get a little bit of a response that serves as an affordance or a signifier that these things are clickable in the first place. And the other great thing about this is because this is a component, we can put instances of this all over the place and all of this interactivity is going to come with it. So if we go back to this page of the site itself and I press Command P on my Mac to go into preview mode, you can see that this instance that existed originally now gets all of this interactivity. And I wanna show you one more thing, so I'm going to leave preview mode and go back into the component here. Cool, now let's say we wanna edit an existing interaction. Each and every layer that has an interaction applied to it has a little lightning bolt icon on the layer list, so that way we can find the layers that trigger our interactions, because it's those layers that we have to select in order to remove or edit the interactions that we've created, which show up here on the properties panel. And if we click on the interaction, it'll give us a little popover where we can edit the specific interaction that triggers this transition, we can tweak the delay, and we can also change which variant this transitions to in the first place. But the real reason I brought this up is because I wanna show you that in this popover, there is another feature that only exists within this popover, and that is to transition once or cycle. Once is the default behavior. That's what we've been looking at this whole time. But cycle allows you to link to the next variant without knowing what the next variant is. So simply by saying cycle, it will get rid of the variant option altogether because it's automatically gonna go to the next variant until it reaches the last one, and then it'll go back to the first one. So this is really good for slideshows and linear experiences, or even just a toggle that goes back and forth, back and forth. So that way you don't have to create a bunch of separate interactions. You can just create the interaction once on the primary variant, and wherever that's visible on other variants, you can click it to go to the next variant. And speaking of slideshows, eventually you're gonna say, wait, what if I wanna go from one variant to another automatically? Maybe instantly, maybe on a timer. It didn't look like there was a way to do that, but there is. You just have to select the variant itself and add the interaction from there. When you add an interaction to the variant itself, you get a new option here called Appear, which lets you choose an amount of time before this transition gets triggered automatically. And you also get to decide whether or not this transition is going to play or if it's gonna remain paused while it's off screen before the user has scrolled down to it. And there you have it. Now you know how component variants can unlock an entire world of designing interactive experiences. And by adding thoughtful animations, those experiences aren't just functional, but delightful. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.